This video is not for kids. Go do your homework. Hey everyone, I just got a gigantic package in the mail today that I am so excited about because it's basically Kirsten's collection from the 80s, like the entire thing, I think minus her summer story. But the main reason I bought this lot was because it had one of the rarest dolls in Pleasant Company history in it, and it was one of the last things I needed to complete my collection. So I'm going to show you all the stuff I got today, and then I'm going to show you this doll because she's a really good one that you're not going to want to miss. So anyway, let's look at some doll stuff. Before we get too far into it, I just wanted to acknowledge that this channel now has a thousand subscribers and I am so happy, excited, and grateful and just wanted to say thank you so much to everyone that's following me along on this crazy journey of trying to basically find every single piece of ch my childhood that I missed out on. So it's really special to me that you would join me for this. I really, really appreciate it. That being said, I'm working on a Q&A video. I've been collecting a lot of questions and if you still have one that you haven't asked yet, feel free to leave it down in the comments and I'll try and answer it in my, one of my upcoming videos. And I think that video is going to be a lot of fun, so hopefully you'll ask me something juicy. And also I know it's been like a majorly requested video that I do a complete collection tour of all of the stuff that's basically behind me. And I've actually already started working on it. So I've got the first, uh, it's going to be in three parts, I believe, and I've got the first part of it filmed already and it should be up within the next week or so. So you also have that to look forward to and I can't wait to share that with you too. But anyway, let's have a look at all the stuff that I got in the mail today. I'm gonna try and kind of go in the order of the catalog because I always like doing it that way for some reason. I don't know, I, again, I think I'm just, I like to be a little bit methodical about things. But the first thing that showed up in here is her school dress. And this is actually the first version of it, even though it's not a first edition. Oh, this is like a fun thing. Like you always get like random, I'm assuming doll hairs and all this stuff. So I'll try and like, place that gingerly down somewhere so it doesn't end up in the carpet. But anyway, this dress, I believe, let's see, let's have a look at the tag. Oh yeah, this is an exciting one. I get to teach you something today, which I always love like being a complete, uh, you know, know it all with this stuff. But anyway, this dress actually has a tag that just says made in China. It doesn't say Pleasant Company or anything. And I may have talked about this on the channel before, but this is actually a dress from 1987. So randomly, uh, they started making dresses like this that didn't have Pleasant Company tags in them. And I'm gonna guess there was just a shortage, like they were probably between batches because a lot of the uh, 1987 garments don't actually have copyright 1987 tags on them. They'll either say copyright 1986 or I believe they started doing copyright 1988 in 88. So a lot of the 87 garments are going to have either a copyright of 1986 or they're going to be generic like this. And I think Kirsten's school outfit is actually the only one that I've seen with this tag, if I recall correctly. Maybe her, I think her bonnet might have that from her meat accessories. I think you can find those too. But anyway, so this is a 1987 school dress. Again, this one came with the original shawl. Again, nothing particularly special about this, but this is the original pattern that was on the school dress. It's got the division sign. They ultimately changed those, I think, in the early 90s to, I don't even know what the pattern is, but they switched it from the division sign to like a floral looking pattern, or it looks like birds or something, I can't remember. But anyway, this is one I'll be selling because I already have the first edition of this, and this one is a, a year or two after the one I have. So this isn't one I'll keep, but I should be able to get a decent amount of money for it. It's in good shape. It's just missing the ribbons, I think. The only thing from her school lunch in this set was the napkin that comes with everything. And I might just hold on to this on the off chance I find a lunchbox set that ha like is basically missing the napkin. So this is probably not worth a ton of money, but I know it's a super early one. So if I manage to find like a 1986 or 1987 lunch, uh, I can use this if I'm missing the napkin from it. Strangely enough, this is one of the few things from 1986 that I don't have as Kirsten's lunch. So that's one thing I am still on the lookout for. I think there's that and maybe a couple other things. So one of these days I'll get it, I guess. And the other thing I got from her school collection is her school bag. And I think it actually might be complete. Uh, you can see here, I've actually got the pamphlet as well. I don't know if this came with the, the bag or the possibly the dress or something, but it's not, always nice to kind of get the pamphlets with them because sometimes they can kind of give you a clue to what year it was made. Even though the copyright year isn't always exactly correct to the year it was made, sometimes they're a little bit earlier and on occasion a little bit later, but a 1986 copyright, uh, I'm going to guess that this was from a 1987 piece. So it's, there's a good chance it's from either this or the dress that I just got. But anyway, I'm gonna have a look in here. I can see that it actually still has the original chalk piece in it. 
And usually if it has this, it has everything else because this is one of the things that usually got broken or lost over the years. So it's really like a special treat to actually be able to have a complete set of this. So let's see what else is in here. We've got the ruler. I can never tell if this is in focus. And interestingly, it's got a Made in Taiwan sticker on it. It doesn't have a Pleasant Company sticker. And again, that's how you know that this is a super early piece as well, as it doesn't actually have like a branded Pleasant Company sticker. All right, let's have a look in here. Let's we'll see what we got. All right, we've got the chalkboard. And it looks like this was played with. It's got some writing on here. I can't see what she originally wrote on it, but I forgot if I said this or not, but this came from the original owner. So it's really kind of fun to go through all of this because this girl had pretty much everything. So I can tell she really loved Pleasant Company. And, you know, I feel like getting stuff like this, you know, it's just, I don't know, it's just extra special when you get something that you can tell was actually really loved when it was new. And all of this stuff was like really well taken care of. It's in amazing condition. We've got the child's first reader. I'm just gonna try ducking out of the camera to make things focus. I hate putting my hand behind things for some reason. I don't know why. We've got the, what is this? The, I think it's the eraser for the blackboard or the chalkboard. And then this should, I think have six. I don't know if they're, oh yeah, reward of merit. There should be six of these in here. Let's see how many we got. Oh, awesome. All six are in here. That's really great. So this is a complete set, which is really cool. I actually have one from 1986. So again, I'm not going to keep this one, but this will help kind of offset the cost of all of this because this was not a cheap lot. So I probably will sell quite a few things in here, like I said, because they're not, for the most part, none of this is first edition with the exception of maybe a couple things. And I have the first editions of most of this. So anyway, we'll have a quick look at her, at her rewards of merit. So this is what they look like. I'll just show you quickly one by one. I don't want this to be the world's most uninteresting video, but if you've never seen these before, this can be kind of a fun thing to look at because these pieces kind of got lost over the years. And actually this is my favorite one right here. I think this one's really pretty. Sorry, my uh, camera setup is still not the best. I am eventually gonna invest in a better setup where I can monitor everything a lot more easily, but I can only kind of vaguely see what I'm recording. So I can't always tell if this is in focus or not. So I'm gonna try my best. But yeah, these are really cool. I just love all these little pieces that came with all of this stuff because a lot, like I said, a lot of it got lost over the years. It was meant to be played with and things that are really tiny and fragile just don't always stand the test of time. So like I said, I really love when I find something that is from the original owner and it was actually played with and looked after and it's still in really good condition. I just think that is, is such a sign of how much this this product line was treasured by so many young children. It was really special to so many of, I will say them because I didn't have it as a kid, but I have it now and I, I still, I just am always constantly blown away by the quality of this early Pleasant Company stuff. All right, that was all our school stuff. Let's have a look at what I got for the Christmas collection. First is the St. Lucia outfit. It looks like it might have a tiny little stain on it, but it's not a big deal. Again, I'm not keeping this. This will be for somebody who wants a fairly good deal on this but I think this one had a 19. Is this interesting for me to like tell you what tag year is on these things? It's like one of the first things I look at when I get outfits from Pleasant Company because I'm always so curious what year it was made. This one's from 1989. So yeah, I think a lot of this stuff was actually purchased in the late 80s. I think she got the doll in 1988 and then, you know, for the next few years was getting, uh, probably as gifts, uh, getting different things from her collection. But this does have the original lace pattern, which is really cool. So definitely a super early looking one. And had the original socks for the St. Lucia outfit. Again, these are super early because they're like that brighter, more like orangey poppy red color rather than like a deeper, uh, like more blue hued red. So I can tell that this is a super early pair of socks and these would be the originals. And then her crown. Uh, this actually, I think three of the candles were missing, but otherwise it's in good shape. But like I said, I'll probably sell this as a full set at a pretty good deal to someone else. So. It can, you can find the candles here and there if you kind of look around and it's also possible to make some custom ones. So I think someone will still want this. It still like has some value. So I will probably sell this. I also got a near complete St. Lucia tray as well. I think it's just missing one of the, I forget what they're called, the buns. I can't remember the name of the buns. Why can't I think of the buns, hon? I literally cannot remember. Yeah, if you can see here, it's hard to show this vertically, but you gotta be kidding me. Oh, it didn't break. Uh, I almost broke the bun that I still can't remember the name of, but we've got the candle. Again, this is a really hard piece to find. 
this little sprig and the tray and the napkin. And this version, again, has the, let's see if I can show it the right way up, the Made in Taiwan sticker on the bottom. It doesn't say Pleasant Company. So again, I'm gonna guess this was probably in 1988. Whatever year was on that tag, it was, was it 88 or 89? This would be from the same year as the actual gown. And look, this hit my tripod and fell on the ground and still didn't break, so nice. And then the last thing from the Christmas collection, again, something I've had a million times over is her Sari rag doll. These are actually quite sought after. I think you can usually get about 40 or 50 bucks for these. And again, this is like the version pro pro the late 80s, so it's not exceptionally valuable. I actually have earlier versions here. Like this one is the first edition from 1986, and this is my 1987 one. And I think this is another 1988 one. But actually, one really cool thing I can show you, if I can do this without breaking everything, I don't want to get them mixed up either. Okay, so the one in my left hand is the one I'm keeping. These would have been made roughly around the same time period, and I believe Pleasant Roland actually commissioned like local uh, sewers in the USA to, it, correct me if you know better, um, let me know in the comments, but I think that it was a bunch of different local people that made these. So they vary quite greatly. Like sometimes they can have different fabric and you can see here they have like different yarn color for their hair. So a lot of people collect these because the variations are, there's so many of them. Like I saw somebody had a collection of like 15 or 20 of these and they were all different. It was really cool. But I'm trying to be good and not collect like every single version of every single thing because it gets to be a lot. But I am kind of tempted to keep this because it is still a little bit different from my 88 one. But I probably will sell this one too. And that's all the Christmas stuff. Sorry, I had to go cut the heat off. It was getting hot in here and I'm starting to sweat. All right, where was I? Up next, I think, is the birthday collection. The most exciting thing about this lot, actually, as far as accessories go, is I think I got every single thing from her birthday collection, with maybe the exception of the cats. I think I got everything else. And a couple of those things I actually haven't even seen before. Again, I'm about to show you like, like a table and chairs and that kind of stuff. So I was still missing from my collection the table and chairs, the salt box, like the party treats set and something else. Oh yeah, missing the cats. Again, I still have yet to get the cats. But anyway, I'll start with her. Oh, what's in here? Uh, I'm gonna start with the birthday dress in pinafore because this actually had the original bag. I just stabbed myself with something. So yeah, if you've never seen it before, this is what the original, well, actually this isn't the original garment bags. They, they started doing these in 1988, these, um, what are they called? Poly bags. So they're just basically plastic bags where they would have the dress on a plastic coat hanger and it would be inside this little garment bag. Uh, originally in 1986 and 1987, they did them in gift boxes with ribbon and stickers. It was obviously, they quit doing it because it was a way more expensive and time consuming way of packaging everything. So I imagine like once the sales volume went up, they started doing things that were a little bit cheaper and easier. But anyway, this is what the 1980. I think this actually is from 1990, if I look correctly. I think this must have been one of the later things she got, but you can see here it's got the original product code, which says KBO, which means Kirsten birthday outfit. So anyway, that adds a lot of value to this outfit because again, I'm selling it. I already have one from 1987. So I got the birthday dress and pinafore that would have been packaged in there. Again, nothing insanely special about this. It pretty much looked like this throughout the 90s. And let's see what year this was. Not that it really matters because there's only one major variation in this and it was from the one from 1987. Uh, let's see. So this is a 1990 copyright. So yeah, she got all this stuff probably in the very late 80s and around 1990. But yeah, this has the version of the pinafore that has the Velcro instead of a functioning button. If it has a functioning button, that means it's from 1987 and it will have a copyright 1986 tag in it. And I have a couple of those actually. That was one that was a little bit harder to find. So again, because I have two of the first version, this is something else I'll sell. But one really cool thing about it is it actually came with the original crown that goes on her head. And this one hasn't been touched either. You can see it's like very neatly. Is it focusing on my face or this? Oh, you can see how neat that looks. What you're meant to do, actually, I'm from, you know, I would say you're supposed to fluff these up like you would a Christmas tree. So you would take these flowers because they're, 
I don't know what the newer versions are like, but the oldest versions are basically made with wire. So this is all like floral wire and stuff. So you can actually take these flowers and leaves and everything and kind of fluff them out so that they look a little bit fuller. A lot of times I see people put this on their dolls like this, and I don't think it looks as good. Like if you look at the catalog, she's got a wreath on her head and the flowers are like kind of popping up off the top. So that's what I try and do when I display mine, which I actually have. I'll show you what mine looks like. So you can see here on my 1986 Kirsten, she's got big teeth. I love this doll. She's one of my favorite Kirstens. I actually don't even have her in my display, but you can see how I've kind of taken the flowers and fluffed them up. I think that's an important thing to do. I just think it looks a lot more like the catalog and it just looks a little more vibrant and lively. So I think that's an important step when you get these things, just FYI. Boop. Next from the birthday collection is her quilt. And again, this is the very first version of this. You can tell by the color of the the swatches or swatches patches on this patchwork quilt that it's a very early version and i think i can't remember if they had some different versions of this in the late 80s but this one pretty much matches the 1987 version which was the first version there was even though this has a copyright 1990 tag again i'm gonna guess that all of this birthday stuff was bought in 1990 probably after she had the doll for about two years but this one is in really great shape and this is quite sought after. I probably will be, be able to get a little bit of money for this because I'm trying to, like I said, I paid a lot for this lot. So I wanna try and offset the cost of it if I can. So I'll probably rehome this as well, but it's in really, really great shape. And it's the first colors that match the 1987 version. So very special. This also had the coordinating, I forget what it's called, but it's basically like you make your own version of the quilt for the little sari rag doll. So it's got the embroidery hoop that came with it. And I think this piece of like muslin that's in here is not original. I think the, <laughs> look, another hair, yuck. Uh, I think this was added by the original owner. So I don't, I, I can't remember. Correct me if I'm wrong in the comments, but I don't think that this white piece of muslin is original, but it does have, get that hair off my hands the original what is this this is called embroidery floss is that right uh let, let me duck out of the camera so you can see it but the original pink embroidery floss it's like miniature it's so cute the miniature version of the quilt again let's see copyright 1989 but again i'm gonna guess this is all from 1990 there's oftentimes you'll see something with a copyright year on it but it was actually bought like a year or two later that's totally normal and this actually still has the original heart patches as well with the sewing needle which is crazy to me that they were selling this to eight-year-olds <laughs> like I feel like there's so many sharp objects and splintery things and breakable things like I were eight-year-olds like better behaved in the 80s and 90s because I don't feel like that's a thing I just feel like there were a lot of pricked fingers and splinters and stuff with this collection but it's really cool how I don't know real all this stuff is i just i love seeing all this stuff in person finally it just really has held up to my expectations after all these years and some of it's like even better quality than i imagined so yeah a complete quilt set next in the birthday line i've got her party treats i believe the collection is called so it came with this original salt box which is so beautiful i again this is the first time i've seen this in person i haven't gotten one up until now and i've been collecting for years i've just been trying to be really good about kirsten's collection and only get things that are first edition or like really good deals but sometimes i just get things when they come to me in lots and this is the case with this i finally got a lot that had the salt box in it and i think this is the second version so i probably will continue to look for the first version but i'm going to keep this for now because i need one for my display because i finally got the table and chairs for collection in this lot too which i am so excited to finally set up but anyway i think this is such a beautiful set again this is one of the early ones so the flowers still look really pretty and i just think this is so adorable and looks really really good on the table again in that set it had the cake and this is made out of like polystone or resin it's it's very heavy i gonna guess that maybe they started making these out of plastic eventually but i believe the wood plate came with this set and it looks like I can't read what language this is, but maybe if somebody can read it in the comments, you can tell me, but it has a sticker on it. And I'm going to venture to say this was originally on here because like I've said, all of the early Pleasant Company stuff, like most of it would have stickers on there that don't say Pleasant Company. They're either another company's name or it'll be like a generic made in Taiwan sticker. And again, case in point, the cake on here has the original Silvestri sticker. And Silvestri is the company, I forget where they're based, but this was made in Taiwan. But 
they were the company that was sort of like a third party company that made all of the food items for Pleasant Company. So if you see like the cake, the Molly's lunch set, I believe was made by Silvestri. Samantha's lunch set was made by Silvestri. They also made Samantha's party treats, like her pedophores and stuff. And they probably made Kirsten's lunch too, I believe. So a lot of this like tiny food items were made by Silvestri and at least in the early days. So if you find ones that have the Silvestri stickers on them, you know that they're super early. Again, usually very late eighties. These little wooden bowls didn't come with that set, but I just stuck the strawberries in here to try to not lose them because I feel like they like to jump out of the bowl. <laughs> but um, anyway, if you can kind of look there, you can see these again are the original strawberries and I think they're all there. Again, this girl took really, really good care of this set. So that is a complete saw box set, which was really awesome. And these miniature wood bowls actually go with the next thing in the lot which is the original row pottery set. And it, I believe, is complete, which is so awesome. I absolutely love this set. It's one of my favorite sets in Kirsten's collection. It is so well made. It was made by Row Pottery. They actually made it. And I believe they are based in the Midwest. So it was a local company to Pleasant Company at the time. Or I guess it would be local to them now because they're still based in Wisconsin. But anyway, this is such a beautiful set. And I believe this is the second issue set. I have the first issue set already. I spent a fortune on it last year and it's still in the box because I haven't had a table to display it on up until today. But I'll show you the pieces really quick because if you haven't seen this in person, it is so beautiful, but it can be kind of expensive to get so not everybody has it and not everybody has one that doesn't have broken pieces but if I can make it through this filming today without breaking anything this will be a complete unbroken set wish me luck so it came with these two dinner plates and yeah I can see here it looks like it originally had a row pottery stamp on there but it's probably faded over time the first versions of these actually didn't have any markings on the bottom and I think they were a little bit lighter in color one of these days I will go through and show you mine. Actually, I probably will end up showing it on my collection tour video because I'll put it out So when I do that part of my collection. So I'll show you the first edition ones later, but these I believe are second edition, but still really, really beautiful and very early. Here's the picture that came with it. And a lot of times the handles on these are broken off again, because you know, if they were played with by children, I mean, I'm nervous enough that I'm gonna drop it and break it. I can imagine if an eight year old had this, like what would happen? It's got all the original silverware. I'm not going to go through that one by one because that'll be a little bit boring, but I see, yep, six pieces in here. So that's complete. It had these two little mugs in here. Hopefully this is in focus. These are so cute. I just, this set is so beautiful. I love the hand painted birds on here. It's got like little speckling in the pottery. It's just so beautiful. I can't get over how good a quality these toys were. It's like weird to even call this a toy. <laughs> And we got the burlap napkins that came with it. Again, these are in great shape. And it came with the original tablecloth, which is amazing. And it even still has the original sticker on here. And again, this is a sign of an early version because it has a sticker on there that's not a Pleasant Company sticker. I don't know if OOI or OO1 is a company or anything, but again, oh, this is a little bit dusty. So I wanna um, maybe set this down quickly because I don't wanna get dust all over everything else I'm about to show you. But again, this doesn't have any stains or anything. This was in great shape. So yeah, I got a complete super early row pottery set in amazing shape, maybe just a little bit of dust. And other than the doll, I think this is actually the thing I was most excited about in this set was I finally got the table and chairs for Kirsten's birthday set. Let me reach down here and grab the other chair so you can see them. But I think this, again, is probably a second version because it's got a Pleasant Company stamp on the bottom. I think the very first versions don't have that stamp. And ultimately, I'll probably seek one of those out. But the furniture, I don't try to worry too much about getting a first edition just because a lot of times they look exactly the same. And in this case, these look fairly identical to the first edition. So I'll probably will have this for a while. And then if a first edition shows up really cheap, I'll probably get it then. But for now, this will be my permanent table setup for Kirsten. So I'm really happy. And of course it came with a table. It's a little bit dusty, so I don't want to wave it around and knock dust around everywhere. But this is so well made. This, I mean, this looks like professional craftsman woodworking and it's very stonky. It's solid wood. It's covered in dust and I might start sneezing in a minute, but I'm really happy with this. No major scratches or dings or anything. So this is gonna be in my permanent collection for a good while. So I'm so excited to finally have this. It's so much bigger than I anticipated it being actually.
I absolutely love this. Again, just a testament to American Girl and Pleasant Company's commitment to quality. I am just so thrilled when I get a piece like this that is just in this amazing shape and in such beautiful craftsmanship. Love it, love it, love it. All right, next up is her winter story. And the first thing I've got on top here is actually her undies set. And I'm trying to remember if there's, I think there are socks that came with this and I'm looking at them right now, I think. But again, I think this is a late 80s version. These can be kind of hard to come by. And if I remember correctly, I think I have the original 1988 version that I think came with my signed Kirsten. So I don't think I'm gonna keep this if I have the original 88 version. But this is hard to find, so somebody will want this. Yeah, and it even came with the original socks, so this is great. Oh look, speaking of socks, I think these might go with the birthday set. I can't remember if the birthday outfit came with socks. I'm thinking it did, so this actually would go with the birthday dress and pinafore and crown, so that was in there. And I also got the, I forget what this is called. Every time I go to show this, I forget the name of this. I think it's like winter shirt and blouse. No, winter skirt and blouse. But it came with the original ribbons. These are the second version of the ribbons. Let me see here. But yeah, these are really beautiful jacquard ribbons. And this is version number two. And again, I think, let's check the copyright year on this and see. Yeah, this is from 1990. So again, a lot of this stuff, I'm going to imagine she got for Christmas in 1990. But I believe this is a complete set. I think the ribbons shirt, <laughs> no, yes, blouse. I don't know what this stuff is. I don't wear stuff like this. I wear t-shirts and jeans. But uh, so what was I saying? I've like completely lost track. So it came with the ribbons, the blouse, and the skirt. And I think that makes it a complete set. And it also came with my favorite outfit of Kirsten's if I am looking at everything. Yeah, I'm pretty sure this is my favorite thing they ever made for Kirsten in terms of outfits, uh, which is her winter woolen set. These, I believe, are old enough to be hand-knitted. I think they started doing machine-knit, and I cannot remember what year they did that. Oh, yeah, but these are 1989 tags, so this would be the hand-knit version. And these are so well-made, and I think they are so cute. I just, to me, this is, like, my favorite thing to put on Kirsten every winter. And I think I have my favorite 1986 Kirsten in one there. And I think... I can't remember what year I put on her. I think that's a 1989 as well. And then I just preserve my 1988 version. But yeah, this is complete. And if you are thinking about getting this set for Kirsten, you really should because I, it is just so well made. It feels like human clothes, like good quality human clothes. I cannot say enough good things about this set. I also got some winter accessories for her too. I feel like I just did like a pop-up. I was like, hello, um, like Mrs. Doubtfire. But Anyway, what was I talking about? But yeah, I got the carpet bag for her winter set too. And again, one of the ways you can tell that this is a first edition, and I actually, this looks like it's in perfect shape. So I probably will keep this one because I actually don't know the exact year of the one that I have in my collection, but it looks nearly identical to this. So um, I'll either keep this one or the one that I already have. I'm not going to keep two. But anyway, you can tell that this is a first edition because it's actually lined. They quit lining these a couple years in. I can't remember what year they actually stopped lining them, but the earliest ones are going to have like this black polyester kind of lining in it, whereas the later ones are just going to have the reverse side of this. Uh, what would you... I don't know what, this is probably not brocade. Whatever this fabric is, you'll just see the reverse of it on the inside if it's a later version. But this is the first version, so I'll probably believe we'll keep this one. And the last thing from her winter story I got was a near complete version of her, are they called Winter Amusements, Winter Pastimes? I can't remember, but it's the set that has like the snowshoes, the paper dolls, and the thomatrope. And this is another really hard set to come by. This is one, again, I have the original version that's from 1988 and it's mint and it has the original packaging. So I won't keep this one, but somebody will want this as well because this is really hard to come by, especially the original Thomatrope because it's basically just a little piece of paper and string. And I think these got lost and damaged and thrown out over the years. So this can be a really hard piece to find. But yeah, this has the original version of the snowshoes. And I would venture to say that this is like real leather. If you see hair in any of the stuff I'm showing you, I'm nearly certain it's doll hair because it's like Kirsten color and length. Nobody in this house has hair this long. But anyway, this is the first version of the snowshoes. Let me see if I can duck out of here. If you can see, there is a Made in China sticker on this, and that's usually how you can spot the first edition of these snowshoes or this whole set is if it has a Made in China sticker on it instead of a Pleasant Company sticker. And as I said before, the Thomatrope. And I would take this out and show it to you if I thought this wasn't the original bag. But this looks like it actually hasn't been played with 
just based on how the string looks in here. So I really don't want to disturb this because this will help keep it mint for the next buyer that wants to have this in their collection and they might not want to take it out. So I'm going to leave it as is, but basically the way it works is you take like each end of the string and you spin it and it basically takes the bird and, and it makes it look like he's inside the cage. So, so yeah, I guess that was like a pioneer girl pastime. All right, let me set this stuff down. I'll show you the paper dolls. Well, what's left of them. So this is the paper doll set. And again, these are really hard to find. I've seen people sell, try and sell just the paper dolls for like $40. So this set isn't complete anymore. This was obviously played with, or at least the pieces came out and the original envelope is missing too. So this is all I have of the original paper dolls, but you know, this isn't really my favorite thing for all of these dolls. This is just, you know, to me, this is like a little bit of a throwaway piece because why would you want this when you have an actual American Girl doll? The world may never know. But anyway, it's in there. It'll help kind of complete the set, at least to a little bit of a degree. But yeah, I won't be keeping this, but it's still really cool to get them because they are so rare to find these days. All right, I'm going to show you just a couple more accessories, and then I'm going to show you the super awesome doll that I just got. But just a sneak preview, I guess. You can see I got her bonnet here. She came with her complete meat accessory set, so that's really cool too. So this is her bonnet, and it's the version from 1988, and this is why I think this doll was from 1988. Uh, I'll tell you a little bit more about why there's some confusion about her date in just a second, but you can see here, this actually has the tag with the black text on it. I don't know if that's in focus or not, but it says copyright 1988 and it was made in China. And I also got her Amber Heart necklace. And this again is a second version because the hardware goes all the way through the heart. But this would be, like I said, the second version, especially looking at the, I don't, again, I don't know jewelry anatomy either, but the clasp on this is actually broken, but it's fixable. Let's see if this can focus. But this is the original class style. So yeah, this would be probably from 1988. Oh yeah, because the tag said 1988. So of course this is from 1988. And it just is, it, this kind of came out of the class, but I can fix that or whoever ends up buying this can fix that super easily. But yeah, it's nice to have these because the heart on the older versions, even if they're not first edition, the heart is like a little bit smaller. It's almost like cheaper looking, but to me, I like them just because I know that they're earlier and more rare. But yeah, this is still great that it came with this set. All right, before I show her to you, I just want to preface this with, I didn't do any planning for this video. I got a gigantic box in the mail and just was so excited to take everything out and show you that I didn't sit down and plan anything. So I'm going to do my best to kind of explain what makes this doll special. But if I leave anything out, do not fear. I'm actually going to do an entire video explaining the history and all of the hallmarks of what makes this doll special. So if I leave anything out, like I said, don't worry, we'll talk about her a lot more later. But anyway, the whole reason I bought this lot is because the doll that was included was an original 1988 Dreamer Kirsten. <laughs> I'm gonna see if I can get her up close so you can get a good look at her and then we'll talk about why she's special. <laughs> So the reason this doll is special is because she has a very specific eye type that was only made in what I believe is in one batch in 1987 and one batch in 1988. Again, there's some debate amongst collectors when these dolls were made because like mine that came today, she has 1988 tags on a lot of things. And the original owner said she bought her in 1988. So I'm nearly certain that they made Dreamer dolls. Again, I'll get to the description in a second. But uh, I, that's why I believe that Dreamer dolls are at least 1988. But I think some of them were made in 1987 too. But what makes them a Dreamer doll? Uh, first off, Dreamer is a collector coined term. And I cannot remember the name of the person that came up with the... Uh, that ended up naming them dreamers because it's not an official pleasant company term. It's just a collector ended up coming up with what I think is a really good name for these. So anyway, what makes a dreamer doll is the eyes on a dreamer doll, which can either be Kirsten or Molly because they have the same eye type. Their irises are actually one millimeter smaller in diameter than your standard Kirsten doll. So if you can see here, you can kind of tell that she's like, they like to look off in the distance typically 
And a lot of people think like, oh, just because you can see like white under their eyes or they look upwards, that's what makes them a dreamer doll. But it's actually the specific eye part that came with the doll. So you can't really like move her eyes around or like reposition them in her head and be like, oh, look, she's a dreamer. They have to have that specific eye diameter or they have to have that specific diameter in their iris. So I can't remember the exact numbers. I think that it's like an eight millimeter iris versus a standard nine millimeter. If I recall correctly, I think these are eight millimeter in diameter, but they're really, really sought after. There are so few of them made that they are very coveted. And I've only ever had one before, as uh, Kirsten anyway. I got her almost a year ago, but I ended up selling her because there were some other things I wanted to buy and she was worth a lot of money at the time. And the one I had actually had really small eye sockets. So it was harder to tell that she was a dreamer, Kirsten. So I decided to let go of her thinking I would get one before long, but it actually took me an entire year to find another one. And these dolls can actually be really polarizing. A lot of people don't like the way they look because they do kind of, if you are familiar with like the term uncanny valley, they can kind of have a look that's almost like just a little bit too realistic and they can be kind of creepy to some people, but I really like the way they look. I just think that they, again, I think because they maybe look just that slight bit more human, that's why I like them. And one of the fun things you can do too is you can actually kind of angle their eyes. The way these were made, I don't know if this is a, was intentional or not, but you can like make them look to the side and look different directions. You can even like cross their eyes kind of. I don't know if she's super cross-eyed right now, but... Some of them you can really make it look like they're like looking at their nose, which is really fun. But yeah, this doll was made in 1988. And oh yeah, and if you are unaware, she's a white body. Let's see, I can show you if you're interested, but any doll made by Pleasant Company before uh, 1991 is gonna be a white body. You can see here, so she's the 1988 white body. But yeah, this doll took me a long time to hunt down and I'm really glad I finally have this one in my collection because that leaves me with only one more variation of Kirsten that I'm looking for that I think I'll find before long. But uh, yeah, this is one of the rarest Pleasant Company dolls and I'm so excited to finally have her. These aren't her original braids. I kind of quickly braided them before the video just to kind of make her look a little bit more like Kirsten, but I'll probably brush her hair out and, you know, style it just a little bit better so it doesn't look quite as messy, but she was in amazing shape when I got her. Whoops, my battery died, so I actually had to take a little bit of a break. So I kind of forgot where I left off, but I think it gave you a pretty good idea of what a dreamer Kirsten is. Again, the main thing is that her eye parts, her eye parts, that sounds terrible. Her eye has just a different size iris on it. And again, it really changes the look of their face. And that's why they are so popular because they kind of, again, like they look like they're dreaming off in the distance. And they kind of have like that thousand yard stare. And again, they're not for everybody, but I truly love them. And like I said before, I'm pretty sure I mentioned you can get a Kirsten or a Molly that has those eyes and they were made about the same time. So I believe you can get them from either 1987 or 1988, depending on which batch they were made in. And it's basically the same exact eye part, but uh, Kirsten's are obviously blue and Molly's are gray. <laughs> Boink. I'm always slapping dolls and I realize I think it's because I like I pet my dog like this sometimes because he really likes it he'll kind of like lean into it and so I think that's what I'm doing when I'm like whacking these dolls on the head I'm just like oh aren't you a good girl but anyway so yeah that's my exciting new doll purchase for the week or at least one of them anyway because I'm always getting doll stuff in the mail these days but I was really really excited to get this one and I actually wanted to show her eye up close really quick because this one actually has a little bit of a defect. If you've heard of silver eye in American Girls, this is a very similar thing. If you look in her right eye right here, she actually has what collectors call bubble eye. And it's essentially the same thing as silver eye. It just happens in the pupil instead of the iris. So basically what happens is, is this style of eye that Molly and Kirsten have is called a, the collectors call it like a pinwheel eye, but I call them painted eyes because they actually have paint. When you take them out, you can look basically at the back of them and they're basically just a clear eye, like injection molded eye. And then they're painted from the back. So the pupil and the iris are actually painted and then they go in and paint the white. So it's all painted from the inside. So this is all smooth here. And so it's painted from the back. I don't know if that makes sense. But anyway, so the paint starts to peel back in some of the older Pleasant Company dolls. And it, th that was happening for years. I'm actually surprised 
how long the silver eye epidemic basically happened and basically a 1986 doll up until like i think basically until they started moving production to china i think pretty much every german made american girl doll or pleasant company doll was susceptible to silver eye so you will still see like the american girl today dolls will get silver eye so this is no exception again she's from 1988 and She's got, like I said, she's got bubble eye, which is essentially silver eye, which means the paint in her pupil is pulling back from the the plastic, so it's not attached anymore. So what that does is basically kind of creates this, it, for bubble eye, it just makes it look like a, there's a bubble on top of her eye, like she's got a cataract or something. But the way to fix this is you actually pop the eye out and then you take... In her case, you can probably just take the paint for the pupil out because she's an older doll, the paint's not as thick. So you can usually get the pupil paint out without disturbing the iris and you just paint it back in with uh, more black paint, basically. It's a very advanced skill to have as far as repairing American Girl dolls, but I'm actually pretty good at it. I've done it dozens and dozens of times. Uh, spoiler alert from my Q&A video, I actually used to be a toy maker. So I have some pretty decent skills as far as working with small 3D objects. So I've repaired a lot of silver eye in my day and so if I end up keeping her I probably will repaint her pupil but one of my best doll friends actually has a dreamer that she's been thinking about trading for a different dreamer so we're kind of talking about maybe swapping because I really love her dreamer doll I've been yeah I've kind of had my eyes on her for a little while so hopefully the trade works out because I really want that doll and I think she likes this one so if I end up keeping this doll I'm gonna fix her pupil but if my friend gets her she might leave it as is so I don't want to touch the doll until I know what's gonna happen with her and the trade and everything but even if the trade doesn't work out this is such a beautiful doll i really really love the dreamer dolls they just have such a unique look they really don't look like any other pleasant company slash american girl doll i'm gonna grab my molly if i can get her off the shelf just so i can kind of show you like what they look like together so here's my dreamer molly and i funny story actually at one point had five dreamer mollies which is absolutely insane that is so many dreamers because I, they're really i'm sitting here like stumbling over my words i'm so excited i have two dreamers but they are so hard to come by it was kind of nuts that i ended up with five at one point but i ended up selling all of them but this one because they especially at the time were very valuable and i used them to kind of get some other things in my collection so this is the only one that survived i'll give you a better look at her She's a little unhinged looking. She actually looks a little bit nutty, but that's why I ended up keeping her because I don't know. I just like them when they look really different from the other variations of the American Girl dolls. I like looking at things or I like having things that, you know, are just a little bit different. It makes my collection feel that much more special to me. I like having the dolls that kind of either nobody else really wanted or ones that nobody else can get. So that's, again, I, admittedly, I think... It's, you know, a little bit more fun for me to collect something if it's rare. You know, I think we all kind of have a little bit of that in us. But, you know, ultimately, it's best to collect the things that you really love, that you love looking at. But it does make it that much sweeter knowing that not many other people have her. Sorry she looks so crazy. I really probably need to fix her hair a little bit better. But <laughs> it kind of adds to the character that she just looks like she rolled out of bed. Her glasses aren't even on straight. But yeah, that's my dreamers. Bonk. Well, that's all for today. Thank you so much for hanging out with me today. I, these videos are so fun to make and I really appreciate that you've taken the time to make it this far into the video. I've been just rambling on about dolls for weeks now and it's been so fun to share that with you. If you're on TikTok, don't forget to follow me over there. That's actually my favorite social media platform. I think it's really fun and silly and I just, you know, I like to play around and make kind of dumb videos to just try and get a laugh out of people. So if you have a TikTok account, be sure to follow me at I Dream of Johnny. I'm also on Instagram at I Dream of Johnny. <laughs> Whoops, my camera died again, so I should probably get going. Please be sure to subscribe to my channel and join me for my doll journey. This has been so much fun, and I am so grateful to everyone that's following me along for the ride. Also, leaving a like and a comment really helps the channel out. It helps boost this video, and it helps you find more content like this. So, yeah, give it a like if you like. And until next time, please take care of yourself, and I'll see you soon. Bye for now.